get to three and zero. Oh, and um, really, I thought our guys fought hard all day long. Um, it was good that we finally got to get a bunch of guys into the game, not just in the first half when things were a little bit closer, but in the second half, um, some third and fourth string guys getting in there. So that was good for our team, good for our locker room. Um, I think Curtis McNeil is probably the, the really neat story of the day. You know, here's a guy that only touched the ball, I think, twice last week. He goes in there and runs great. And not only that, but goes on special teams and I think made the tackle on the 10-yard line. So um, we love stories like that. You know, when guys aren't getting much much playing time, but they still practice extremely hard and wait for their opportunity and pick up the flag and run with it. So um, that was good. And and the quarterback played pretty good. You know, you know five touchdowns again, no interceptions. and um, So it was good. It was good to have some rhythm. The, the best thing was the second half. You know, to come out and really move the ball and stop them for the most part um, when our ones were in there on defense. Um, it was really good. That was a challenge all week. Put together a big game to play second half. Lane, why the timeout at the end of the game? The clock was the play clock was running down. And we we had so many substitutions going on of trying to get all these different guys in and out of the games. Um, and then the long run happened, and we ran a personnel. We tried to change to another personnel, and um, so then I just had to call a timeout. So we didn't get a delay game penalty. Were you trying for the record for Matt? On play no, I wasn't. There's a story behind that, and it's not your fault. Start. I'm not. Get, I'm not. <laughs> I said give the just, ball to Booty. I was trying to give the ball to Curtis and. Um, Justin Mesa, we're told, signaled the wrong uh, signaling on the wristband. And so somehow we ended up with that play. Um, I was just trying to get the ball to Curtis on my ass. <laughs> Why did you. I was trying to put him back in. <laughs> Why did you uh, decide not to. I'm sure him? this is something positive, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> somehow you have something negative about this game. I'll wait on Monday morning. Thank you. Your grades. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, you didn't rotate back the first three quarters, so what was going into the decision? Well, we went with Mark early. We were hoping to get up, you know, like we ended up doing, so we could play the other guys um, like they did. And, um, you know, that was really just what we went with. And there weren't a lot of runs early, you know, and a lot of pass protection stuff, which he's our best guy in knowing all that stuff. Going into the game, you talked up Nassib and his completion percentage and his efficiency. How do you feel like the defense handled him? Well, he's on fire. I think he started 11 for 11. Mm -hmm. like. um, so, I mean, that's exactly what he put on film. He played in the first quarter like he had been playing in the fourth quarter. He was a really good quarterback. He did a great job of getting the ball in hand. And I'm sure that, you know, they, they felt maybe some mismatches with our defensive line. If they, you know, held the ball a lot. And they did a great job. I, I thought, you know, their opening script was, was perfect. And he executed it really well. We were trying blitzes to get there, and the ball was just coming out. He was on, he was on target. And, one time on a third down, all the way to his fourth progression made the play. Can you talk about the Rimble and the uh, and how far they've come? Yeah, really, um, and, and I've really just, I would add Marquise into that story too because they're really all the same. We talk about the three freshmen, and, um, you know, I've talked about those guys that make mistakes when you start playing them, and, and that's just the reality. It's not making an excuse for what, we, what happened in the first two games. Um, they're going to make mistakes, and so to see those three guys, um, you know, come up with big plays today and hopefully uh, have overcome that, as opposed to not playing them early in the first two games, just playing older guys that may be making those mistakes today. So um, I think it worked out pretty well. How would you assess Marcus Martin's first first game of this road? It's kind of tough whenever you're dealing with guards to, to know right away afterwards. You know, I know he had a couple penalties there, um, so we'll have to go look at the film. But for the most part, the quarterback was clean. I think the last play was the only sack of the day, so um, pretty good. You said you thought that ASU should have been the preseason favorite in the Pac-12 South. How do you feel about your own team going into that game next week? Well, I feel good if we continue to practice hard and continue to improve. Um, you know, I, I think they're a great team, and that's what I said at the time. And when you look at it, especially on defense, look at that roster. They have great players all over the place and they shut down people, and then they're extremely explosive with the quarterback in the passing game. So um, they're, they're a really good opponent. I hadn't thought you know, about the game. It was all about getting this game and getting this win. If there's any negative offensively tonight, it kind of struggles to get the running game going for a good long while. What do you think is going on there? How do you get that? Yeah, it was surprising um, that we were able to run the ball so much better late than we were early. You know, it was completely different. Um, they, they did a good job. You know, hats off to them. That's what they do. You know, they're going to play four bump. They're going to come down here with those safeties, and you got to win outside. And so you saw that today. You know, you saw that. Um, you know, like Marquise on the guard, you've got to win outside and throw a further amount of yards to do because they're not going to let you run the ball all day. But, you know, as you take all that into account, you know, really for a group that I got on pretty hard last week, um, 
I'm probably you know, most proud of our offensive line. You know, the last sack really didn't kind of fall. It's a screwed up call. Um, you know, to go no sacks and run the ball, you know, put up 501 yards and 175 on the ground, you know, 40 pass attempts, you know, with one sack. And I'm really proud of those guys, how they responded to criticism. You said why, why this week did you guys decide to go vertical with the passing game? Was it something that you saw on film from Syracuse, or are you feeling comfortable with the offensive line? You, I think you just have to do it. You know, you have to do it versus this team. You know, Syracuse is going to be good against the run. You know, they're going to be aggressive. They were seventh in the country in defense last year, and um, they're coached really well. And so you're going to have to take some shots. You're going to have to make the plays. Otherwise, you're going to get. I just didn't want to get in one of those Virginia games again. You know, or Minnesota games. You know, where we feel like we feel like we're just running it just to run it. You know, we're not taking advantage of what they're giving. So. Why we were more aggressive today. You said last week that uh, that a win like Utah would help bring your team together, and having a dominant win like that, how does it set you up for the rest of the season? I think it sets up really well because we got that type of win two weeks ago, and now we kind of got one day that felt like the old days, you know. And so um, it's not as exciting sometimes, you know, right afterwards. But but it, you know, we're obviously excited. We had a tough one, have to go through that, or we let our defense to pull it out. And then today, I thought the offense, you know, especially you know, even the last drive with the penalty and the screwed up. Pass play, you know. Still, they ended the game on offense. You know, that was our whole thing. We kept giving the ball back, you know, to our make, putting our defense on the field in the first couple of games. And so that was, you know, trying to finish it. And so it was really neat too, because a lot of those guys in there you don't even know. You know, left tackle was a walk on. The center was the right guard that moved in there. Um, you know, and then both the true freshmen were the guards. And Jeremy Goldman was out at right tackle. So it was good to see. Matt has passed for five touchdowns in a game before, like two to twice last year. Is there anything different or special about tonight? Compared to those, you know, I think it's the same type of ones. Um, the one thing I would say maybe different is this is more spread around. You know, like this, you know, like this Cal game, you know, was so dominated by Robert. Uh, you know, that this this one was a little bit more spread around to other guys, and people are taking Robert away. You know, understand that Robert's still playing really well, even though his numbers aren't the same as they were in the opener. But if you're going to put a corner inside of him, put the safety over the top of him when he's out in the field all day long, it's going to be hard. You know, there's not many plays to get a guy open. And so what happens is that's where you see Randall Telfer run wide open down the middle of the field because Robert's out there and there goes a safety running over the top of Robert and leaves Randall open. One more for Lane. Is the decision to be less conservative or to go vertical, however it's described, is that something that carries forward the rest of the season or is it a game by game? It all depends on the game. You know, what, for a day away. Utah wasn't going to let us do that at all. You know, for the most part, go down the field very much in what they did in the first half. And so um, we just... Because it's kind of a Robert factor. You know, we see teams come in and we've got 